For this section, we're going to be looking at solving techniques and looking at some equations that we haven't solved yet, but we're definitely going to build upon everything we do in it, especially what we were doing in section four. So the first thing I want to start with is something known as a radical equation. When we're working with something called a radical equation, we're going to be working with things that have a square root on it, and how can we deal with that radicand? So what I want to do is I want to look at these steps, and I want to kind of go a little bit more in depth and make sure you understand the process of what we're doing. And then I also want you to grab your calculator, and let's look at your calculator together to make sure you can identify what buttons or functions are going to benefit you for this section. So how to, given a radical equation, solve it. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to isolate the radical. It says actually isolate the radical expression on one side of the equal sign, put all remaining terms on the other side. So just like when you're solving for x, you always try to isolate x. In this case, we're going to isolate the radical or get the square root function completely by itself. Next step, it says, if a radical is a square root, then you're going to square both sides. If it's a cube root, then raise both sides. In other words, for an nth root, raise both sides to the nth power. So here's when I kind of stop, pause, and review some things with you. So if you remember in previous step, if we were solving for x, we would take addition and we would do subtraction. If we were taking multiplication, we would do division. So in this case, if we have something like an x squared, what we're going to do is we're going to take that x squared and we've got to eliminate the square, so we will square root it. Square rooting x squared is just like multiplying and dividing to get rid of a number. This would turn out to give me just an x. Now, students somewhat deal with this. We've done this in the previous section when we were extracting a square root. But let's look at if I had, say, x cubed. If I, say, have an x cubed, I would cube root to eliminate that cube. And in a general sense, if I have x to the n power, and I want to eliminate that nth power, I would have to take the nth root of x to the n. So this is what step root, step two is having us deal with, is how do you eliminate something such as that? Um, and so for us on this section, we might have a square root, such as the reverse, and the opposite of a square root would be that we would square it to get rid of it on both sides. And so I just want to kind of have a quick conversation on getting rid of a squared or a square root and how those are inverse operations. I also want to have a conversation with your calculator. So I like to use this TI calculator here. Also, a Casio is a really good one to use as well. They're pretty inexpensive. They run about eight something dollars at Walmart. You will need a scientific calculator to complete this course. A graphing calculator will not be used on any exams and a simple calculator won't do everything you need to for the class. But I wanna make sure you know where some of these buttons are on here. So if I was looking at squared, and I want to say square a two, I would go this button right here, and you can see it has a small two beside it. I would press it, it says two squared, and this would output and tell me two times two, which is four. Likewise, if I wanted to do the square root of four to figure out that it was two, you can see that it's written here in gray, so I'm gonna to have to use my gray button here, then the x squared, you can see that it puts a square root up there with an open parentheses. So I could put my four and enter, and it would do the square root of four, which gives me two. The button that you're probably not familiar with is the one right above it. Say I want to do two cubed, I have to do two. It's not squared, it's a third power, so I have to do this housetop button and cube it. Well, here's that unfamiliar one. See right here above it in gray, it has an X and a little root sign. So if I hit second in this housetop, you'll notice it took my answer and then it put it an x and then the root, it's because you have to enter that number that you're wanting. So if I'm wanting a cube root, I have to enter three first, then this button. So this is telling me that three, they are placing it right up there where the x is. So this is telling me this is the cube root of, say I want to do the cube root of eight. So that would give me two. So I just want to kind of make you aware of your squared, your square root any other power or any other root button and how you need to enter that. When you're doing any other root, you need to enter that number first. So key root, I'd have to enter three first. The three, the calculator is placing up where that little X is. So this would be the key root of eight and it can output to give me two. So just want to give you a little rundown of your calculator and how that can benefit you with these higher powers or different roots. And let's keep moving on. So number three says solve the resulting equation. 
So once I'm able to eliminate that radical, I can now solve it. If a radical term, term still remains, go back into steps one and two. And then lastly, check the solutions by substituting them into the original equation. I cannot emphasize enough to check the solutions. I've not been checking most of my solutions as we work through these answers, but when working with radicals, you must check your solutions because most times you're going to get two answers, but only one of them is feasible. So what I'm going to do is I want to work this, an this example for you, and then I want to show you how checking your answer showed me which the right answer was and which one was not a correct answer. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that the radical is by itself. You can see that here's my radical. It's the only thing on the left side of the equation. So step one, isolate the radical, check. Step two, we if the radical has a square root, then we're going to square both sides. So you can see I have a square root. So in order to eliminate that, I'm going to have to square the left. But I have to be mathematically correct, so I'm also going to square the right. This results in 15 minus 2x, because your square cancels your root, equal to x squared. Looking at the resulting con um, equation, now I just have a quadratic that I need to solve. So I move everything over to the right side. So I'm going to say minus 15 plus 2x. And so this gives me 0 equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. And now I'm ready to solve like we did at the very beginning of section 4. And so I'll just factor. So what to multiply to give me x squared, x and x. The back sign is negative, so they're going to be different signs. So I'm going to say positive and negative. Then I'm think, what to multiply to give me negative 15? Well, that would be 1 and 15, 3 and 5. 1 must be negative. And then I can see negative 3 plus positive 5 would give me a positive 2. So I'm going to leave my 5 positive and my 3 negative. Solve my two smaller equations. So I get x plus 5 equal to 0, x minus 3 equal to 0. So I get negative 5 and 3. So you can see these steps down here is just section 4. But these starting steps is the new step we're adding in. Yes, we eliminate the radical, but now that we have a quadratic, we get the two answers. So here's what you have to do next. You have to check your answer when working with a radical because these two answers, they are both not going to work. So if I come over here and say, what about if x equals 5? Go all the way back up to your original and plug in there. So I would say 15 minus 2 times negative 5 is equal to negative 5. Solve this out. I get 15 plus 10. I get square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is positive 5. So this does not work. 5 and negative 5 are not the same value. So this is not a solution to this problem. You can see, now I really need to check 3, because what if I really just messed up the whole problem? So if I plug 3 into it, I get the square root of 15 minus 6. I get the square root of 9. And we can see that square root of 9 is 3. So 3 equals 3. This would be the only solution for this problem. So again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you plug in and check your answer when you're working with your radicals. Let's work on this one. We're going to do the same steps. Um, give yourself quite a bit of room to kind of work on this and to be able to check it. So again, the first thing you want to do is you want to isolate your radicals. So you'll notice my radical is all beside itself on this left-hand side. Everything without the radical is on the right-hand side. So I'm first going to square both sides completely to eliminate the radical. So this gives me x plus 3 equal to 3x minus 1 squared. Now be careful not to shortcut this because many students will shortcut and they are not mathematically correct. This is equal to when you square something, it's something times itself that many times. And so that means I'm going to have to FOIL or double distribute this out. So let me just continue working with this. I first squared to get rid of the radical, and now I'm just solving for x by other means. So x plus 3 is going to hang out on the left. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 1 gives me negative 3x. Minus 3x plus 1. Combine like terms. So this gives me 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. 
you'll notice I'm now working with a quadratic. When you're working with a quadratic, you've got to move everything over to one side, set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract the x, and I'm going to subtract the 3. So I get 0 equal to 9x squared minus 7x minus 2. And so now I'm going to have to factor this out and solve. So I'm going to do that last method that I showed you in solving by factoring. Multiply the 9 and the 2. That gives me a negative 18x squared. So I think what will multiply to give me negative 18? Negative 1x, negative 18x, negative 2x. Sorry, to positive with positive 9x. See negative 3x with positive 6x. And I think which of these could combine to give me that negative 7, and that would work if I put the negative on the 9. So I'm going to split this. I get 9x squared. I'm going to unadd the negative 7, so that would be a negative 9x with a positive 2 minus 2x. And then I can factor by grouping. So I can group the front 2 and the back 2. Um, in the front one, they have a 9x in common, leaving me with x minus 1, don't forget that 1 placeholder, plus take out a 2, giving me an x minus 1, and then pull this grouping out front. Now that I have something times something to give me 0, I could say x minus 1 could be 0, or the value of 1. 9x plus 2 could be 0. And just solving that, I get x to be negative 2 9. So again, to recap, from here to here, none of this is new. This is all solving for x, and actually from here to here is solving your quadratic. The only thing I've added in here is eliminate that radical by squaring it. And then lastly, you must check your answer because both of these answers may not work. So I'm going to come over here to the side and say let's check x equal to 1, and let's check x equal to negative 2 ninths. So when you come in here and you check your answer, I'm going to go all the way back up to the original. So I'm going to say the square root of 1 plus 3 is equal to 3 times 1 minus 1. So I get square root of 4 is equal to 3 minus 1. So 2 is equal to 2. That is true. So this is definitely an answer. Come over here. I'm going to plug in my negative 2 ninths. If you're not particularly fond of fractions or negatives, Use your calculator as you work through this. Negative 2 ninths plus 3 and square root it using my calculator gives me 5 over 3. 3 times negative 2 ninths minus 1 using my calculator gives me negative 5 over 3. Not the same, so this is not a solution for this problem. So you can see that x equals 1 is the only answer, even though when I got down to the quadratic, I really had two answers. So again, you must check your answer as you go to make sure you're getting these correct.